Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee for meteorologistjoechaffee.com and weatherlongisland.com and, of course, SNS Storm Chasers. And, of course, everybody's focusing their attention on Tropical Storm Ermine. One of the things I want to point out uh, here, you can kind of see the off the satellite how things are setting up. You've got this weather front that's easing through the northeast and mid-Atlantic states down. There's some showers with that and the dry air that's behind it. But you can also see there's a, a frontal zone that's established off the southeast coast of the United States and goes out northeast into the Atlantic for a number of uh, hundreds of miles. And Ermine seems to be embedded in all of this right in here. And as we uh, moved through uh, the morning hours and head into the afternoon, we continue to see this um, tropical storm showing signs of uh, possibly reaching hurricane status. Looks like maybe a little bit of an eye is forming here. Uh, at looks like I'm going to just take a guess off the latitude longitude at about 27 and a half north and about 86 and a half west. So uh, judging from that, you know, it looks like it's taking a track right to the bend area here, uh, near, not too far from uh, Apalachicola, uh, Panama City, somewhere in there uh, for a landfall. Now, we're going to watch to see what happens after that. Of course, it's going to be critical. Um, Ermine being uh, embedded in this frontal zone likely means that it will probably track along it. And as we uh, uh, start to pay it closer attention to us, one of the things that <clears throat> is available on the National Hurricane Center's website that's very useful is a uh, storm surge tool. And this is through Sunday morning, and it's based on the advisory forecast package. So this is the one from last night, uh, which um, is forecasting through Sunday morning a, a storm surge, which includes tide heights of uh, roughly three feet from uh, western Suffolk County, uh, Nassau County, back to uh, New York Harbor, uh, Monmouth County, down to maybe Northern Ocean County, um, a three-foot surge with the tide heights, and then also uh, in uh, Cape May County, a uh, three-foot storm surge going into Delaware Bay. There's a little pocket of five-foot surge in Long Island Sound and also in Delaware Bay. Uh, so it's very interesting because with this tool, if I move back, say, two advisories to one of the earlier forecast packages, uh, which uh, had longer-term tracks a little bit further to the left, uh, you can see how uh, also, you know, in terms of timing also, which is critical, you can see how the storm surge uh, forecast has changed, where it had three-foot storm surges up and down the New Jersey coast and uh, more of a storm surge at Long Island Sound, Island Delaware Bay, based on the overnight advisory which is the last one here advisory number 15 uh, it's kind of shifted around and and adjusted itself a bit and again i want to emphasize this is only through sunday morning does not um you know, it does not include yet periods beyond sunday morning and so this could be a reflection of the speed of the tropical system in terms of its arrival and its track and not necessarily um you know a, a, an actual change in forecast that it's going further out to sea uh, I, you don't, you, I wouldn't conclude that from this. This is, again, only through Sunday morning. Now, we do have the latest uh, GFS model. And I just want to show you that uh, the track on this is actually to the left of the model run from yesterday evening and to the right of the in-between run. So it's kind of a compromise, I guess, between those two prior runs uh, as the... Uh, a tropical storm moves off North Carolina and then starts to do that hook. So it looks like it wants to hook back toward uh, the central or southern New Jersey coast. This is by Sunday afternoon, which would have rain and wind uh, over a large area. Uh, this is, uh, you know, kind of consistent with the idea that we saw yesterday. So it's sort of hooking it back and then it drops it southward from there. So it's, it get, this is only going to be able to get so far north because of how this is reacting to the upper air flow. And it's because we have this very deep upper air system that develops, this trough pulls out and you're left with energy in the southeast that intensifies over time and moves right overhead. And it can only go so far north because now you have a big ridge of high pressure aloft in eastern Canada. There's a jet stream goes uh, from the Plain States across the Great Lakes into southern Canada, so it lifts up. 
So this thing can only go so far. So th this is the forecast problem. You're going to have uh, Ermin get only so far north before it comes to a grinding halt, and then one it's going to either be forced southward or do some kind of a loop or get ejected to the east very slowly. Uh, this is going to be very problematic in trying to figure out coastal flooding uh, and, and beach erosion issues, among other things. Uh, also, the extent of how far north any rain gets, uh, how much rain we actually do get. Now, this is the GFS. This is, we're now into Sunday evening. Let me just punch up real quick uh, the total accumulated precipitation. And, you know, I mean, it's got the white areas would indicate two plus inches. So it does have some two inch rain amounts going up into northern New Jersey and some three and four inch or more rain amounts down through central and south Jersey. The northern extent of a half an inch runs up into the Hudson Valley to about Poughkeepsie into northwestern Connecticut. Again, this is through um, Sunday evening. So let's just give one more look here. We do have out now to a 90th hour, the 90 hour, which takes us to one o'clock in the two o'clock in the morning on Sunday. So you can see what it's doing. It, it, it brings it up and <clears throat> just makes a loop off the New Jersey coast. So. You know, this is going to be very interesting to see how this all plays. Uh, I would just point out one other thing, and that is the fact that we're kind of dealing with an, sort of an odd situation in that the, the system is going to be interacting with that big upper air storm we pointed out. And as a result, um, you know, we could see some things that we normally don't see in terms of, uh, of intensification or lack of intensification. It's possible that this system could wind up intensifying a little bit, much like a non-tropical system does. Um, on the other hand, we might find it uh, also that it might weaken slower than a tropical system does as it sits over cooler water. We'll have to see, all right? Uh, this is all gonna be a bit of a, learn, a work and learn in progress for all. So don't forget to, uh, to uh, check out all your latest storm chasing needs on snsstormchasers.com. I have a number of posts on meteorologist joechaffee.com, so be sure to check those out. And uh, we will uh, have updates, live Facebook video updates. So get on my Facebook page, meteorologist Joe Chaffee, um, and you can check my live video updates. And I'm also going to have an open forum tonight at 8 o'clock, where you, uh, sometime after 8 o'clock, where you'll be able to ask some questions and, and um, we can chat back and forth about all this. So have a great day, and um, we'll keep watching Tropical Storm Ermine.